big show for you tonight. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. I got to tell you guys, New Orleans is known for its great cuisine, right? And a part of that cuisine is classic Creole cooking. But just because it's classic doesn't mean that it's old-fashioned. Today's Creole cooking is all about fresh ingredients, bold flavors. So I thought that's exactly what I'd give you a taste of tonight. A little Creole cuisine. How's that? Oh, guess what? Speaking about classics, give it up for Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band. Oh, yeah, it's classic Creole cuisine tonight right here on Emerald Live. got a great show for you tonight. I got to tell you something. Creole cuisine. I got oh, a treat man. for you guys. You're not even going to believe it. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. You're not even going to believe what's coming. Aha. Uh -huh. Today, uh -huh. I've got a couple of my really good friends here. Anthony and Gail Uglish is in the house from New Orleans. Yeah. I got to tell you, every time I get a chance when I'm in New Orleans, I got to stop by their restaurant. I mean, they have taken Creole cuisine to really a new level. Matter of fact, take a look at this. Check it out. Here I am getting ready to go into one of New Orleans' best kept secrets, Uglishes. I don't know if you can handle all this, but I want you to get a taste of everything. Here's the fried green tomatoes, topped with boiled uh, shrimp and remoulade. Shrimp and grits. This is called shrimp yugi. It's got a little spice to it, a lot of flavor. Shrimp and sausage patty. It's topped with the Creole mustard sauce. This yeah. is what I asked for. This is what I, I got. I want you to try a little bit of everything. Try the different flavors. You'll like it. Thanks, Anthony. All right. I'm home. Okay. Right here at Uglishes. Yeah. So you guys want to know what's on the menu tonight? Okay, check it out. Oh, yeah, this is like a real show, you know? I'm going to do a little fried oyster salad with a little perno buttermilk dressing to start off with. Really delicious and a classic. Anthony and Gail and I's great friend Marcel Benvenu, a little veal dish called Veal Marcel. And then a couple of your dishes. We're going to do Paul's Fantasy one of my favorites, and firecracker shrimp. How's that sound, huh? Good to have you. Welcome. Does that sound all right to you, Doc? Sounds great. We're just warming up, you know. Ooh. Watch this. We're going to start by making this little simple dressing. Obviously, it's an emulsion, so we're going to have an egg. And then a little Parmesan cheese some green onions, then little Creole mustard or a whole grain mustard if you can't find that. Got to have a little garlic, little lemon juice, and some buttermilk. Now, don't play with my emotions, please. <laughs> A little Worcestershire sauce and some perno. Mmm. Just a little splash of perno in here. Well, it is a perno dressing, right? <laughs> now, I said emulsion. That's because we're going to let that start going around and around and around. And then slowly, what we're going to do is start adding the oil to make the emulsion. Now, a lot of these food processors, they have, hey, hey, they have these things in here that got like a little hole 
you know, and it just drops the oil in there. So you can do it that way. But what you do want to do is do it very slow. You want to do a slow stream so you don't break the dressing until it starts coming together. <laughs> likes me, what can I say? <laughs> so now, we've got the dressing. Oh yeah, and if we keep adding more oil, it'll get thicker and thicker. So what we're gonna do now is check out the thickness. Not too thick, not too thin, see that? Like a nice dressing. Now, a little salt. <laughs> Fresh ground pepper. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> and then the dressing's done. Now, to the next step of the salad oysters. Oh. I know something about that. <laughs> we want to drain them a little bit because when you buy oysters, especially shucked oysters, or if you're shucking them yourself, you're going to have its own liqueur, sort of the own water that it's in, you know? I like to drain them. I like to save that, though. I cook with that, different things with that. But what I like to do is take flour, mix it with some corn, some cornmeal. Now, I don't know where you get yours. Where I get mine, it don't come seasoned. So you got to... Add a little seasoning in here. And then we just want to make sure that the ingredients are mixed up. Oh, perfect. That's a good combo when you mix flour and cornmeal together. So the oysters are wet. I'm going to take the oysters. And then what I'm going to do now, as you can see, I'm going to put a few in here. And we're going to start breading them. Or flouring them, whatever and get them ready to fry. So we got the perno dressing. We're going to have fried oysters. When we come back, I'll show you what they look like. Doc Gibbs and the Everlast Band. Oh. cuisine tonight with my friends Anthony and Gail Uglish. And why I'm up here, you're probably scratching your head going, has he lost his mind? <laughs> yes, I have. <laughs> no, actually, what happens is this. We have uh, just started with our new digs, a little library. And so I wanted to uh, have the restaurant book, Uglish, in the library. <laughs> yeah. A lot of great Creole recipes in there, as we talked about. One that I'm going to finish for you right now that we started because we've got the buttermilk dressing. John, nice, nice job on the book, buddy. Thank you very much. You did mom and dad proud, and Thank I'm proud you. of you, too. Thank you. So we got the oysters uh, breaded up. Now what we're going to do is... Uh, when you're frying, you always want to be sure that uh, the excess flour and stuff doesn't go... Uh... You all right over there, Doc? Yeah. <laughs> just getting things together here. Okay, I just... I'm trying to, too, you know what I mean? It's rough sometimes. So I know, buddy. So what we want to do is be sure you shake off the excess, and then we're going to fry them. 370 degrees is a good temperature for frying. Now, we'll get rid of that. We'll add a few more towels here. We'll shake them up a little bit. Now, back to the Perno dressing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take that dressing out now. 
So you can make it thicker, like I said. Kind of like it, that, that consistency. Now I've got some beautiful baby greens here. I've got spinach. I've got some frisee. I've got uh, some baby arugula in there. So I got, you know, I got a lot of stuff going on in there. A little peppery thing. And mm -hmm. So now what we want to do is we want to season the lettuce. Okay, so we can season it up a little bit. And then... Uh-oh. You probably did that, right? Yeah, no, oh, no, that's missing. <laughs> not me. Huh? I, I think it was Jay. Come on, you, you got it in one of them drum kits or something over there. <laughs> Jay? No, don't pick on Jay. All right, salt, pepper, oysters are frying. Oh, look at that, huh? Oh, yeah, babe. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of the buttermilk dressing, now that it's seasoned, on our lettuces like that. And then what we're going to do now, we'll just sort of toss a little Parmesan cheese as well on there. And then we'll just lightly toss, you see, lightly toss. Don't go in there and go beat up the lettuces. It didn't do anything to you. Gingerly, just nice, gingerly, just nice. Gingerly. 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 I'm feeling it. Right. So now, that's, I'm feeling the love too, baby. <laughs> So now we're going to uh, put the beautiful, see, they're not, it's not overdressed. You know, sometimes you get the salad, it's so, it's like slipping right off your, yes. there it went. Oh, that must have been the spinach, you know. <laughs> All right, so, you know what I mean, Anthony? I hate when that happens, you know. <laughs> now, like I've told you before, and if you're just tuning in for the first time, you have landed on Emerald Live. <laughs> You always want to season. You always want to season when it comes right out of the old fryer, because that's when it's vulnerable. So you can't see that at home, but it is. So now we just take a beautiful fried oysters like this, and uh, we just put them around the salad, okay? And uh, then a few more fried oysters. I've had a few oysters at uh, Gail and Anthony's place, I'll tell you that. They got this little oyster bar. Woo, woo. Don't get me started, baby. Now, sort of in the corner, I just put a little of the dressing like that. That way, if you want to dip your oyster in there, go ahead and dip your oyster. If you don't want to dip your oyster, you're not going to hurt my feeling. And then uh, there you have it. All right, folks? A little salad. See, I think what a lot of people don't realize, Scale, is that um, beside that you guys are maritable partners, you guys are also business partners. Yes. And the restaurant's been open since 1924. 24. 1924. Huh? I love it, too. Let me tell you. All right. For our uh, mutual friend, Marcel Benvenu. I'm going to, uh, before I do a couple of your dishes and Gail's, and we talk a little bit more about the book, uh, I want to do this veal marcel, really simple. I, I happen to love veal. And, uh, you know, if veal is one of those things that uh, you gotta, you got to kind of buy the cutlets, and then you can use this fancy thing that they have called a jacata, which are all these little, you know, knives come out and, you know, that kind of thing. Or, wow. or you can just do it the old-fashioned way which is you just kind of pound it. Wow. So when you get veal cutlets, generally they'll come small like this, thin, or they'll come a little bigger, but they're not gonna come tenderized or jacotted. So what I do is um, just get a little plastic wrap and uh, lay it on my surface. And then I take my cutlet or two and uh, then I just sort of lay the plastic wrap over it like this. And then I take, you know, some of them are a hammer. They're all different types. Mine is just 
We couldn't afford the hammer type. So, or we had one, but, you know, who knows what, it, what happened to it. It's probably over there by Doc's drum kit. But you just kind of do the old-fashioned pounding out to make this a little tender like this. Yeah, thank you, Doc. Yeah, and we get this. Beautiful. Little pounding music by Doc Gibbs. Hey, when we come back, I'll show you what Bill Marcel looks like. Don't even think about touching that dial. for Anthony and Gail Uglich and their son John, please, our guest tonight. Coming up from New Orleans. And we're doing a little veal marcel with some uh, Creole cooking. I like to use a little salt and a little pepper on the veal. And then for this next dish, I want to season the flour. I'm going to dredge the veal in the flour and start cooking that. Another component of veal marcel, nice asparagus. The, the littler the better, the more tender. If not, you got to peel them, right? And then another mixture that we use is we take a little olive oil to start, and then we take some sliced button mushrooms and start cooking them. Oh, yeah, babe. <laughs> and then we're going to um, have a little salt and pepper on that as well. Beside the mushrooms, once the mushrooms start cooking... Then uh, there's a couple of other things that go in with the mushrooms. Some beautiful lump crab meat. Oh, yeah, from the Gulf, babe, and some green onions. So that's going to go in once the, uh, once the mushrooms start cooking. And I don't want to cook the veal too soon because veal cooks very fast, especially when it's pounded out like that. Now, the sauce for this whole dish is a hollandaise sauce. Classical sauce. But here's the thing. You got, I'm going to do it in a blender instead of on the stove. I got egg yolks, and uh, I got the juice of a lemon. <laughs> so we want to add the juice of the lemon in here, and then you got to have clarified butter, okay, which is basically all of the milk pots out of it. It's just the top of the butter. So we put this in here. We'll take this little guy out so we can put the butter in. And then you start slowly drizzling the butter into the egg yolks, okay? So here's my butter. Slowly stop putting that in here. Now, if it starts getting too thick, you can always just add a little water. Maybe you want a little hot sauce in here. So that's the hollandaise, okay? So we got the hollandaise, the asparagus, the mushroom, the crab meat, the veal. When we come back, veal Marcel, everybody. Pat Gibbs.
Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here. If you're just joining us, shame on you. We're cooking Creole cooking tonight. Oh, yes. And special guests, Gail and Anthony Euglish is in the house from Euglish's in New Orleans. A great restaurant. Yes, indeed. And they have a great book that their son, John, who just, just wrote. Fantastic. A lot of my favorite dishes, which we're getting to. First, we're going to finish the veal marcel. I'm melting a little whole butter in here. The crab meat, mushrooms, and green onions are just, oh. The asparagus are nice and warm, oh. The hollandaise sauce is just waiting, oh. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the veal that I dredged and begin to start sauteing this, just sort of shaking off the excess flour. Now, when you're cooking with whole butter like this, uh, sometimes, depending on what you're cooking, see, this is thin. So, you know, I'm going to have a little distance here because very, very thin. But let's just say it was maybe a half an inch and you want that flavor. Let's just say it's a scallop. If you add a little bit of oil to this, what happens is that you increase the smoking point. So you'll get a little more distance, if you will, with the oil if you, instead of just the butter. All butter, it's just going to burn. All right, so now we're about ready to uh, plate this great classic dish after our friend Marcel Benvenu. This dish really started with another friend, the Brennan family, at Commander's Palace. So now, we got the veal in here. Like I told you earlier, it's not going to take a lot of time because it's very, very thin, and you don't want to overcook it. So look at that. You see when it gets brown like that? Oh, yeah, babe. Now we'll turn the heat up. Oh, man. So when, I, um, when I'm cooking the veal like this, you oh, can always, if you don't see the seasoning, you can always come back and add a little seasoning to that. All right, now, we're ready to do this outstanding dish. And I'm going to do it family style instead of a, well, no, I've changed my mind. <laughs> I'm just going to do it in a, portion size so here's how it goes you take the veal and you have a couple of pieces like this like three is a good portion for me <laughs> and then you take this delicious mushroom and crab meat don't go breaking all the crab meat if you you spend all that money on lump crab meat don't go in there and bust it all up so now what I do is I take a few asparagus like this and I put a few here like that and a few here like that. And then I take that delicious crab meat and mushroom on top like this, you see? All right? Just on top like that. And then what you do, that delicious hollandaise sauce that you, we made. Now we're going to go and you get that hollandaise sauce. Oh, yeah, baby. And you just kind of put that hollandaise like right over it like that. You see? A little bit more, just like that. Can you feel the love there, huh? Can you feel the love? Yeah? Little essence like that. Bam, 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 bam! There you have it, folks, okay? A little veal myself. Now, let me tell you something. Great recipes in here, and I'm truly, truly one of my favorite restaurants not only in the United States, but in the, uh, certainly in New Orleans. When we come back, I'm going to show you two of their unbelievable dishes from Euglish's. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Back in.
Hey, good looking, what you got cooking? I see it now. That's very clever. Well, we're going to do a little Paul's fantasy here, but uh, folks, give it up for Cliff on keyboards, huh? All right. Lewis on the horns. Sir Charles on bass. Mr. Teddy on drums. Thank you. Thank you. My good friend, Doc Gibbs, in the house. All right, so during a commercial break, I went up to Anthony and I said, okay, um, how do I season this? How do I do this? I always do in other people's dishes. I want to make sure that I'm in the right boundary here. I think we're in check. So speaking about check, what we're going to do is start the first component, a little butter, and we're going to take some parblanched potato first of all, a little salt, and a little pepper, and we're going to start getting the potato base for Paul's Fantasy. Now you can put some essence on those potatoes. All right, I'll do that too. All right. All right, so. That's it. Again, like I said, you can always add a teeny little bit of oil just to kind of get a higher smoking point. So we got the potatoes going on now. So before I um, get into the culinary part of this, John, you wrote the book. Yes. What, uh, what was the inspiration to do that for mom and dad? Uh, it was always my dream to write their cookbook, and I want the book to be unique. And I want it to contain a history of um, the restaurant and my grandfather who started the, who started the restaurant. And I wanted to give people an, an in-depth um, uh, information on my parents that they didn't get to know. You get Absolutely. to meet my parents at the restaurant, but the book provides a little bit in-depth on individual mom and dad and, to, and together. You did a great job, I'll tell you that. So let me, now here's the tough question for you. Okay. What's your favorite dish in the book? Um, tough I, question, right? That's a tough question, but my favorite would be the barbecue shrimp. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. All right, so potatoes are on. Uh, what a lot of people, your clientele, you and Gail's clientele know uh, is that you close during the summer. Mm -hmm. Smart folks, take a little break. But you also still work really hard because you guys are working on new dishes for when you reopen, right? Correct. And w w what's, the, uh, what's the dish Paul's Fantasy about, Anthony? Well, Paul's Fantasy, I got the idea from one of my customers named Paul. And uh, we do soft shell crabs, fried green tomatoes. <laughs> they fix with breadcrumbs. And they are big, big sellers in the place. So one day he came to me and he said, you know, your grilled shrimp would be awful good over the soft shell crabs, you know? Well, you can't get soft shell crabs all year long. You know, it's seasonal. Although there's always something in season in New Orleans when it comes to seafood. So I said, we have a good chance with fish. There's always speckled trout. There's catfish we get from Desalm in Louisiana. Uh, there's drum. There's always something you can get for us fish. So we took the, the idea of doing the breading of the, the soft shell crabs, we did it with, with fish. And we took that same idea with the, uh, with we used the, the grilled shrimp with the butter, and we put it over the pan fried uh, fish, and it came out really, really good. The, the juices from the butter and those, those uh, bowl seasons from uh, the, you know, the seasons, it, it's a heck of a dish. And it's right, always well, been a big, big seller. All right, we're going to do it right now. The potatoes are uh, mm -hmm. getting nice and uh, taste toasty. So I'm going to take the egg, first of all. We're going to beat that up. And then I have some breadcrumbs, as you said. And then what we're going to do is now we're going to take a little bit of salt and pepper on the trout fillets. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of dredge this trout filet inside of the egg wash or the egg and then we'll take that and dip it right into the breadcrumb pretty simple right inside of that and we'll get that all nice and breaded it's kind of like a light breading here now while we're breading those up. Perfect. Inside of the old breadcrumbs again. Then, 
The next part of this, folks, is we've got the shrimp that we're going to start seasoning. So we got the trout fillets in there now. And that's the thing about breading. You just can't get, a, get away from it, but it sure makes things taste good. Including your fingers, right? <laughs> so, now we've got our trout fillets breaded. And now we're going to take the shrimp. And like Anthony said, we're going to take a little bit of essence. Season up real good those shrimp. Don't be scared with that on the shrimp. Oh, no, baby. <laughs> I always order this dish, too. And then... We're going to take a little butter. Hopefully that skillet's not too hot. And we're going to start adding those shrimp in there. Okay? So we've got that pot working. Now, we're going to use a little oil at first for the trout because the breading is going to just sort of Take away a little bit. So what we'll do now is we'll make sure this is hot. Oh, yeah, babe. And we'll add the trout fillets in here. Oh, beautiful. You know, it's really amazing, like you said, the great thing about being in Louisiana is that there's always something fresh with seafood. There's always something seasonal. We're very fortunate to have great shrimp, great oysters. All right, so we've got this shrimp, as you can see now. They go pretty fast. We got our potatoes getting nice and brown. We're going to turn the heat down on those things right now because we got a nice, nice color. Almost like a Brabant potato. Oh, beautiful. And our shrimp are going here. Now, let's check on our trout. I got the heat on about medium high. Um, and uh, if you have a plastic one, it's great. This is a very, very good spatula for, for fish. Um, although, you know, there's a train of thought that you metal and nonstick and, well, if you go in there and scrape everything up, of course it's going to ruin the pan. So, but you see how it's going to cut that little bend like that? Because the one thing about when people saute that I find the most thing, they're really afraid about turning over the thing. They're worried about it either splashing them or getting burned or whatever, and I can understand that. So now what we're going to do is this. We're going to show you how we're going to do this. The best way that I do it is I just use my hand like this, turn it over, flip it over like that. Okay? Look at how beautiful that looks, huh? Am I doing all right, Anthony? Boy, it looks good from here. <laughs> all right, now, here's the pot that I know and that I love. The first thing is we're going to get a little butter. We're going to finish that in there. Going to get a little butter, finish that in there. We're going to get a little butter, we're going to finish that in there like that. And how I remember, now the potatoes get a little shallot or a little onion and a little parsley. Oh, yeah, babe. We're just going to lightly fold that over like that, getting those flavors out of there. That sort of looks like the trick. Got the trout going and the shrimp are going. I'm going to turn the shrimp off. And if I do any justice, I will show you what my memories are at Euglish's of Paul's fantasy. It kind of looks like this. The trout filet is there. The potatoes go just like this. 
And then the trout fillet, like such. And then the shrimp with the butter sort of kind of go like this. And then I think you always do a little bit of that, if oh, I'm not mistaken, you. just kind of like tip. that, right? And then a little bit of parsley like this, and a little lemon. And there you have it, my friend. You're Paul Stanison. Yeah. Did I do all right, Gail? Beautiful. All right, when we come back, the Yugoslavs firecracker shrimp. Stay with us. Stop it. with my friends Anthony Gale and John Euglish is in the house, ladies and gentlemen, from New Orleans. Where do you see this next dish? Okay, now, I, I'm, I've only got so much time, but uh, let me just, I'm going to do things oppositely here for this particular dish. I told you earlier we're fortunate to have beautiful shrimp, right? So um, we do a little salt and pepper. All right, we do a little salt and pepper on those things and get them happy, Okay. And then we take just a little bit of butter. Oh, come on. <laughs> we're going to sort of melt this butter a little bit. And then we're actually going to put the shrimps right inside of there. Okay? Now, we're going to come back here in a second. Bear with me here. Then what Miss Gale loves to do, I'm loving this, because shrimp cook pretty quick. She'll take this incredible barbecue sauce and then she'll start cooking these shrimp. Shrimp of love is what I call them. She'll start cooking these barbecue sauce in the shrimp there and oh, see, they're gonna start getting happy before you know it. Those of you at home and in the studio audience are probably wondering what Gail does for this incredible barbecue sauce. Let me just show you real quick this pot. She takes onions and orange juice Puts it in here. Purees it. You with me so far? Then she takes this puree, and then she uses ketchup and lemon juice, a little vinegar, hot sauce, mustard. Oh, go buy the book if you want to get all the ingredients. <laughs> Brown sugar, a little honey, salt, pepper, red pepper. All of these wonderful ingredients, she takes it all and puts it in with some butter to make this incredible barbecue sauce. What I think a lot of people don't really know, there was a person who sort of inspired you yes. many years ago. That's right. I had hosted a dinner in New Orleans, and I had a few of my pals that came in. And uh, the next day, they all came to your restaurant. That's right. So who was this guy? Patrick Clark. That's right. The late Patrick Clark was the inspiration for this. He, many of you might know that uh, later on he uh, became, was the chef at Tavern on the Green here in New York City. A really super, super, super guy. And uh, it was Charlie Trotter, and it was Norman Van Aken, That's Larry right. Forgione, and everybody came and had lunch at your place the next, the next day. All right, I'm gonna see if I can do this up to your standards here. The shrimp are cooking. Is, is it right. too thick? No. No. And is it smelling the way and looking the way that? Absolutely. It is, okay. okay. <laughs> so I'm back over here. I gotta make Miss Gail happy, come on. Cause when I go home, I gotta go eat over there, folks. You know what I mean? All right, so, wait. There's one more important thing. I take a little bit of uh, cream, 
fresh grated horseradish and some Creole mustard. Yes. And we make this sort of horseradish kind of sauce, right, Miss Gail? Correct. And so if I remember correctly, if I remember correctly, it kind of does something like this. The barbecue shrimp kind of went on the plate like this, right? That's correct. And then you also added a little sauce. Well, we might as well go with it all, right? So if I remember That's right, right? right? And then this delicious horseradish sauce, then sort of, you did that, right? That's correct. Kind of enough? That's enough. All right, that's enough. <laughs> and uh, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, right there. The Euglitz's barbecue shrimp. It was absolutely fantastic having my friends up from New Orleans go buy their book, Just Coming Out. I want to thank all of you for joining me tonight. I'm Emeril Lagasse. See you next time.